Hey everyone, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to process a marketplace payment using Stripe Connect uh, with a Bubble app. We're gonna start by looking at this demo marketplace where I'll show a customer purchasing a product from a seller, then I'll show you the payment going through Stripe. We'll take a look at the Stripe dashboard and see the payment on the back end and a fee that the platform collected, then I'll show you how to do it. So let's say I'm a customer and I'm gonna purchase these jeans. I click on it and I open a product page uh, where I can go ahead and click to buy the jeans and it'll take us to a Stripe page called Stripe Checkout, where I can enter my information. And then for these purposes, because we're in test mode, as you can see in the top left, I'm just entering this Stripe test card, but obviously um, your customer would be uh, entering a real card because I'm in the United States. I need a zip code and I'm gonna go ahead and click pay. So now Stripe is gonna process the payment and then it's gonna redirect back to your app where it says success. And if I take a look into the Stripe dashboard and I go ahead and refresh, we can see the $80 payment went through. And if I open it up, we'll see this is the customer. That's all the information I added. We collected a fee, right? The 10% fee, which I'll show you how to do in the future, as well as the Stripe fee. And so then from this, we can pay out the sellers, we can do everything else with the Stripe Connect platform. So Stripe Connect is a leading solution for processing marketplace payments. Uh, it's used by big name companies, as we can see, like Shopify, Instacart, and DoorDash. Uh, and there are a lot of ways to integrate it with Bubble, but we're gonna be using the Stripe Connect uh, marketplace plugin from Cranford Tech. Um, it's a great plugin that has a lot of documentation uh, as well as a lot of these helpful videos to, to let you get started. So first, we're going to need to go into our uh, Stripe dashboard, and we're going to need to go over into Developers. So we go into API Keys, and so first we just grab the Publishable Key. Now, the Publishable Key is what can be exposed to the public. Um, this is one of the many things that you don't have to worry about, uh, the types of keys and everything when working with uh, a plugin like this one because all we have to do is go into bubble settings pull up the plugin and come over here um, we can see all the data calls and action calls that we have and so I'm just gonna put the publishable key here we can do different ones for development and live and then you go back to stripe and get your API key now this is a test key but if you were switch this off and go into live mode this is a key that you have to keep secret but again, you don't have to worry about that when using this plugin. You're just gonna put it into the secret key here. And then when you put it into API key, you just need to add the word bearer in front of it. Um, so you do bearer space, and then you paste the API key and everything is set up. Now let's just take a look at for this demo app, your database may look a little bit different, but for this demo app, we have three uh, pieces of data. The first is the user. Uh, and in this user, we can see they have a role and they have a store. Uh, and so for this, the role is either gonna be, they're gonna be the customer or they're going to be the store owner. Then when we look at the store, this is the Cranford Tech shop that I just showed you. And so it has a name, it has a list of products, which is three products you've already seen, and then it has a Stripe account ID. And so that's when you're onboarding sellers. Now we can't get into onboarding sellers right now. Cranford Tech has a great video right here, how to create express accounts, onboard sellers, and get that account ID. Um, and you, we're gonna store them here, and that's how we make these calls with Stripe. Uh, and then when we look at our products, we have the three products, each of them have a cost, an image, uh, and then their name. All right, to get into how we're actually gonna build the workflow, just an introduction. Again, your app can look different, and that's totally fine. But here we have a repeating group um, which is just pulling the, the three store products and we're showing the image, the name, and the cost. And then when you click on them, it'll take you to a product page. And the product page has a content of product. So the product is sent to the page. And then it, they use, uh, we display all the information about the product. And then we can go into the buy button, which is what we're focusing on today. Um, and we're gonna do, it's only three actions uh, because again, this plugin makes it super simple to do. So the first thing we're gonna do is just do a search for the store that has the product. And the reason we do that is because we have the Stripe account stored at the store level um, instead of at the product or the user level. So we just need to pull up that store. 
then we're going to create a checkout session. Uh, and this is going to be what we are using Stripe Connect for. Uh, this is the, the plugin. And so our success URL, that's after the payment is successful, where do we go? So over here, we're sending them to the success page. For the cancel URL, there's a cancel button uh, on the Stripe checkout page. We're sending them back to the product page and then sending the unique ID of this product so that they're gonna be back on the, on the same page. So if they cancel accidentally, they can click again. The account ID, this is why we searched for the, the store in the first place, because this is pulling up that store's Stripe account. Uh, now the platform fee, what we're gonna do is take the product, and for this platform fee, we're just making the flat 10% fee. So we divided it by 10. Uh, and then, as you can see, these are both listed in cents. Now, that's just a Stripe rule that you always have. Whenever you pass um, a currency to Stripe, whenever you pass money to Stripe, you need to send it in the lowest denomination of that currency. So in the case of euros and dollars, you have to send that in cents. But in the case of, uh, let's say, South Korean won, where there isn't a... Um, there is no decimals, you would just send the number of that currency. So whatever the lowest denomination of the currency is, that's what you send to Stripe. And so if we're using US dollars or euros or any of those currencies that have pennies and cents, we have to multiply times 100. And so definitely make sure that you do that and review everything and test everything because you don't want to you know, have a thousand a thousand dollar item go through, but you only charge, you know, ten cents as a fee instead of ten dollars as a fee because you forgot to multiply by a hundred. And then of course we have the price, which for here is just just the cost of the component, the quantity, so we can tell Stripe multiple, you know, they're going to buy five of them, uh, and then the currency. This is the three letter currency code. Um, it's called the ISO code. So if you're not sure what the currency code is, you can pass it. And then the beauty of Stripe Connect is that you can be processing multiple different currencies. So this can be a dynamic value. Um, the product name, you just you just uh, shoot that product name. And then down here, don't worry about that yet, except um, for the customer's email, we're just gonna go ahead and pass the email. And then the third step is we're just we're gonna open the external website, which is the result of step two. So this plugin generated a URL. Uh, and so we're not going to open a new tab. We're just going to we're just going to pass forward. And so it's it's basically going to switch the tab, just like I showed you earlier, from we're looking at the checkout page to okay now we're looking at a, a Stripe Connect page. All right, so let's test it. Um, so we'll go into preview, and oh, it's going to be empty. Um, but if we go into um, just the index and we pick a product and go to buy. And we got this error, plugin action. That's interesting. So whenever we get errors like this, they're either coming from the bubble side or likely coming from the Stripe side. So what we can do is go into our Stripe dashboard again. And now instead of looking at API keys, we're just gonna look logs. And logs is just writing down basically anytime you ever communicate with Stripe. When the plugin communicates with Stripe, Stripe writes it down. Uh, and that's really helpful for us because we got this 400 error to our checkout sessions, which again, you don't have to worry about this, it's all in the back end with the plugin, but it says invalid email, customer email. So the value we provided for the customer email is not valid. Okay, that's interesting. So if we come back and look at our code, so to speak, or our bubble app, you can see, now I was a little sneaky, I put in an error for us. This is obviously not an email, um, this is just a URL. And so we can, um, change this to current user's email, and then it'll go through. The other thing just to note about the customer email is that you can actually leave it blank, and then um, you'll have the, the form at the top of the page, just like I showed you in the, in the first example, where the customer enters their email instead of you pass the email. So there's a lot of flexibility here with this plugin and with Stripe, depending on how you send the information. All right, so now that we fixed that error, let's go ahead and try it again. 
Um, so we're going to jeans. And then just a note here, earlier this showed euros instead of dollars. That was text that displayed on the page. I displayed the text of the, of the currency and then the dynamic unit. Um, I made that, mis that that's a mistake. Um, you have to be really careful with that because the currency, the amount, everything, the, the source of truth, what the customer is going to be charged is what's in this workflow, in the buy workflow. And so you have to make sure what match it, what's on the page matches that. Um, so just look out for that. Now we click buy, and now we can see that demo account at cranfordtech.com was passed instead of a blank email. So we go into oopsies, 4242, 4242. So this is the test card for successful payments, 4242 again, and then any four date and any three numbers. And then we're going to just say we're person one, and again, put in the zip code. Click pay. Hopefully everything will go through successfully. Great. And we've got the success paid. So let's go into our Stripe logs again and refresh them. And this time we see everything went through. And we have that email demo. And then if we go into payments, pull up this $80 payment. It went through again. We have the $8 collected fee, the 10% fee we collected, the Stripe fee that we paid for taxes and processing. All the information is here. So that is sort of a, a, a top level intro of, of how, to, how to set up a basic Stripe Connect store. There's a lot more that you need to look into. You need to start thinking about um, confirmation, uh, how you're, how you're going to communicate with sellers, how you're going to log it. The, the purchase on your database, webhooks. There's a lot more information, but fortunately here at Cramper Tech, we have a lot of other YouTube videos and a lot of documentation that you can check out and learn how to do it. So I hope you enjoyed this demonstration and let us know if you have any questions.